Hello and welcome to this week's video. So today we're going to have a look at the British Pan First Editions for the original Ian Fleming James Bond books. Now, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this one and I've certainly enjoyed uh, digging my copies out and going through them. They are fantastic and they're perhaps the crown jewels of my Pan Books collection. So without further ado then, sit back, relax and let's get to it. So let's start with the very first Bond book. Um, so Pan uh, were very quick off the march to uh, to publish Ian Fleming, and uh, naturally they started with Casino Royale, the first book in the series. Um, now this is uh, two, sh two shillings, and it's numbered, you can see it's number 334 in the uh, Pan book series. Now, initially Pan um, just had a numbered only series, so that's what this is, and the uh, numbering was down to the price so two shillings it was a number only series and as we go see later on uh, there's like a G and an X series and this is simply related to the price so when Casino Royale was reprinted it was reprinted with a G number in front of it because they put the price up a little bit um, so this is uh, the first one so this is a first from 1955 the classic classic cover there and I do have another a copy of Casino Royale, which is actually the uh, the second printing, which is perhaps as uh, as difficult to find um, as the first, also printed in 1955. Um, I actually remember getting my copy of the uh, of this one when I was um, I was at school because long before I started collecting pound books, which I do anyway. Um, uh, I collected the Bond books, and the Bond books were, let's be honest, the, the, the best sellers for Pan um, during this period, and uh, they certainly are great books today. Now, the next one we have is Moonraker. So this is in the numbered series again, number 392. And um, this one I've seen sell for some crazy prices. Uh, you know, Casino Royale maybe, you know, 75 to £100 pound for a really, really nice first edition. Um, I've seen this one go for over 300 and I really have no idea why. I mean, it's a great book, but I don't think it's particularly as hard to get as Casino Royale. Maybe they're about the same. So I'd say about £100 pound is perhaps right for one of these in nice nick. Um, and this one was uh, 1956, so then a year after. Um, it is tough to find. I admit I've only had a couple of copies through my hands. Um, really nice uh, nice jacket, that. Um, and I'll pop these around sideways on because these, uh, these first editions um, look absolutely fantastic when you get a set of them together. Although that's by no means an easy task. It certainly took me several years of looking around um so live and let die it was a much much thicker book and you'll notice that this is a g gp standing for great pan um, and that's simply because the price has gone from two shillings to two and six so that's the only reason that this one's actually a little bit more expensive um, but it is a bigger book for your money uh, pan, uh, fleming himself is now pictured on the back cover and although this is before the movies were uh, came out, Dr. No has not come out yet, these books were already popular and starting to become a bit of a sensation. This is 1957. Really good actual novel. That I think my favourite Bond novel uh, to read, a uh, Fleming novel to read, is Casino Royale, although Live and Let Die is also particularly good. Um, Diamonds Are Forever, so this is G101. And... Uh, yeah, not the greatest of copies, these, but as I said, a lot of these I actually got um, when I was growing up and I, I tried to keep the first editions. Um, although I you know, also got a run of the film times and um, some of the later reprints as well are now part of my normal Pam book uh, collection. Lovely jacket, but as I said, this is uh, 1950. This is not the greatest of copies, so one perhaps on my list of ones to upgrade if I get a chance. Uh, from Russia with Love, a really nice uh, uh, cover this. This is by uh, Pef, Sam Peffer, and a uh, really nice perspective uh, jacket on that. He was noticeable for his really detailed um, uh, studies of, of um, 
male and females and a lot of these were modeled on photographs so you would just use actual stills uh, to do it obviously this is still before um the first uh, bond movie so this is all conjecture but um yeah nice copy of that and this one what was this one published 1959 so we are still in the 1950s for these at the moment and that was g229 so now we've got Dr. No. Now this is another one which isn't particularly great condition, but it's kept in my collection for one very simple reason, that it's signed by cover artist Pef, just there in silver. I'm not sure if you can pick that up on the camera there, but um, so not the greatest of copies, but um, certainly one of my favourites, uh, G335. Nineteen sixty, classic cover. That maybe I try and get a, a slightly better copy, but that one will never leave my collection simply because of uh, of uh, Pef, uh, Sam Peffer signing that one. I got to meet him at one of the early nineties uh, London paperback shows, um, and uh, it's the only time I ever did meet him. And I took along every pan book that I had at the time that he'd done a jacket for, as well as some digits and some other publishers as well. Um, that was great. Now, Goldfinger, absolutely fantastic one, that. Still no mention of the movies just yet. Um, this is G455. Lovely, really striking, striking cover there. This is a great pan again. And when did this one come out? This is actually a really nice copy, this one. 1961. So... I believe Dr. No was 62, so right on the cusp of Bond mania, as it were. And we've got uh, For Your Eyes Only. Not one of my uh, favourite covers, but um, it is what it is, I suppose. And this is G551. See a classic, uh, classic book there. 1962 so basically one a year these have been coming out now we've got uh, Thunderball now this is the first in the X series so this is X201 and that's once again simply related to the price which in this case has gone up to three and six although this is a first it has got an over sticker so maybe underneath that was actually three shillings who, who can tell now this one's quite good the bomb books are obviously selling big time by now because there's a uh, the die cut bullet holes in the uh in the cover there which is quite nice uh, showing the two bullets underneath which is uh quite a nice little uh gimmick um Certainly uh, another great book, this one. And um, this particular edition for the first was 1963. That's Thunderball. Now, this next one, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. This is X350. Now... I remember getting this particular one at a Penguin Collector's show in London. I remember it was just 50p, and I remember thinking, oh, God, I've been looking for this one for ages. Um, I mean, even this was over 20 years ago. Um, and I really had no idea how tricky this was to get. And I saw, I noticed that it had 60 cents on, so I thought, oh, well, it must be an export copy, and maybe all the first editions were exported. Um, I mean, just to show you, it is... The British first edition. Um, well, that's interesting for starters. It's got a one and six in the top corner there. So it was sold in Britain. And as you can see here, first published in 1963 of Jonathan Cape, obviously in hardback. And this edition, 1964, Pan Books in London. So it is the first British ed edition. However, for some reason, um, this, as I said, I think this is an export copy, maybe New Zealand. Um, Australia or Canada um, are the places where this potentially would have got sent to. Um, it does seem to be extremely um, 
hard to get hold of and a lot of collectors are really struggling with this one now i've seen some silly prices for that online in fact as we speak um, there's a chap on ebay trying to get 1600 pounds just for a copy of Honor Majesty's Secret Service in Pam First Edition. That is absolutely ludicrous. I mean, I know it's scarce, but, you know, I don't know, a couple of hundred pound tops. It just, to me, it just doesn't seem worth £1,600. I mean, that is just crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm sure you would agree with that. Um, okay, so now we have uh, You Only Live Twice. Now, um, some of these tail end ones... Um, are actually proving quite difficult to find these days in nice condition. And um, I don't know why. I mean, I know the print ones are massive. In my collection, I've actually got um, a rep sales sheet and it lists uh, the, the Flemings at this time. And, you know, whereas a, a shop might order two or three of a particular uh, normal pan book, the Bond books would, would be like 100, uh, 200, you know, absolutely phenomenal numbers. Now, this one, interesting, says not for sale in the UK. However, it is a normal British edition. So this one, once again, is an export copy. Um, it's also laminated, which I don't believe the British ones were. But interesting nonetheless, and that's X434, which is You Only Live Twice. Now, this next one, Man with a Golden Gun, I found particularly difficult to get. Now, I do have the British edition, but it is, it's hammered. So I've, I've also got quite a nice... Canadian printing of it. It's exactly the same as the British one, except it's got 60 cents. However, and it's got the same number, X527. However, um, it has got um, a different printing. So I don't believe these are printed in Britain. These are printed locally in Canada. Uh, yeah, published 1966 by Ontario. In yeah, 1966, and printed in Canada. So these are not British orientated. This is not a British first edition. However, um, it is exactly like the British first edition. So, and because it's such a nice condition compared to the one that I've actually got, um, that's the one that's sort of in my main uh, Fleming first edition collection. Until I can come across another one, which, you know, I mean, these are still turning up at boot sales in various conditions. Um, and you just need to be lucky to try and find a first edition. Certainly the next one, Spy Love Me X653, um, was particularly common. I would say perhaps the most common of all the Fleming um, James Bond first editions. Um, it must have had a huge, huge print run, 1967. Um, very famous uh, cover with the map on there. It's a, it's a beauty in all ways. I absolutely love it. Um, very, very good. That's 1967. And then the last of the main run we've got here is Octopussy. And once again, um, although I've got this one in, in, I've got three copies of this one, by far my best one, and this is not great, is this a Canadian copy again? Um, exactly the same jacket, the same number, X668. It's just got 60 cents on instead of the British, uh, British price. Yeah, printed in Canada. So it is nice. It's a nice little variant to have in the collection, this one. Yeah, published in 1967 in the pan edition there. So that's the full set of the first editions. And as you can see, they do look blooming lovely. I absolutely think these are gorgeous. They're the highlight of my um, pan book collection, not just because they make such a great set, but because the books themselves are just amazing. Uh, they really are. If you've never um, read the Fleming source material, then you are doing yourself a disservice as they particularly they are so so good all right so that's those now i do have a couple other bits to show you so back in the early 90s i think it was about 92 93 there was a publisher in britain called um duns 2 and they published uh these james bond greeting cards they also did uh the best of the agatha christie covers and this particular one uh is is live and let die this is from the first um, now they're not all the first editions, so this one, for example, is that is a later printing of Diamonds Are Forever. That's a great pan. I remember a friend of mine was actually um, he tried to collect every single edition and printing of all the Fleming books, and he had a huge, huge bookcase um, just devoted to the uh, the Fleming books. Uh, wonder what ever happened to that lot um, from Rush with Love. And these are great in their own way. 
as a nice little variation on a theme. So this is the reprint for Casino Royale. Now I do have the books of these because they're part of my main pan books collection and possibly I'll, um, I'll dig out all my reprinted Bond books uh, for a later video. Um, but that's Casino Royale. There's a Goldfinger, a little variation on Goldfinger there. One of my great jackets. Now this is another um, copy of Dr. No. And once again, I got um, Pef to sign along the top there, um, along with my original books. That's what a nice one of those looks like. And I also got him to sign the uh, postcard for Moonraker, which was the later edition to Moonraker. So those are really, really nice. Now I've just got one more thing to show you in this particular video. Now this is, let's make a bit of, bit of room here. This is um, a bookshop display for, um, this is cardboard, for You Only Live Twice. So this would have gone in a bookseller's window. And um, it was just advertising the, the, the latest Fleming novel. Um, obviously, they picked up on the, uh, um, the action in uh, Macau and uh, the Oriental theme throughout You Only Live Twice. And uh, that's a really nice, like, promotional item and... Uh, Certainly, uh, you don't see many of these around. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that look through those Bond first editions. So tell me honestly in the comments below, what would you pay for a copy of Honor Majesty's Secret Service? Is it really that rare? I genuinely would like to know. Um, anyway, there we are. So the next Bond, uh, Bond video on the horizon is going to be the Pam books in movie tie-in edition. So look out for that one in the future. In the meantime, do please like this video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already for similar content like this. And thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.